For me, learning guitar as a kid was a fun and natural and very gradual process. But the thing that really grabbed me was Travis picking. And I had learned to change chords and strum and sing along folk songs with other people and, you know, occasional bass run and some arpeggios. And then when my teacher came in with this Travis tune, that was it. I mean, how cool to keep a bass going and play the melody at the same time. So you have everything in the music self-contained on the guitar. So it just opened a lot of doors. And it's really cool that people are rediscovering that now. A lot of more people are getting into Travis picking. But it wasn't until I was an adult many years later that I actually heard the music of Merle Travis, after which this style was named, of course. And I realized what he was doing was actually quite different from what I'd learned as Travis picking as a kid. So what I'd like to do is give you a little intro to Travis style picking and also work in some of those cool little details, some of the things that he was doing to give it that Muhlenberg County authentic sound. So uh, in, enjoy this. And, you know, uh, there's a few things that we can do just to kind of get started. So the Travis picking, uh, one of the things that's most traditional of that sound is muting the bass. And so uh, he called that choking the strings. And you take this part of your hand, this side of the hand, and just lay it across the strings near the bridge. Uh, so that way it'll mute the notes in the, in the bass that you're playing. And... Uh, the melody notes will still be open. So it's just on pretty much those uh, three bass strings most of the time, sometimes over one, one more string. And uh, you'll find, you move your hand around a little bit and find where you get the best sounds. If you have it too far towards the, the sound hole, it muffles it too much and you can't hear it. And if it's too much over the, the bridge, it's not enough muffle. So find that spot where you like the sound, you're getting just the amount of muffle that you need. One thing you may have already noticed is that I'm using a thumb pick here uh, to play, and that brings out the volume of those bass notes. And you can play uh, with a thumb pick or without. Uh, if you're playing without a thumb pick and you have the hand muted here, you'll be playing with the flesh of the side of the thumb here because you can't really reach the, the, that nail to get that uh, brighter sound. So you'll just have a little more soft sound if you're playing with uh, a regular nail uh, versus a thumb pick. And so uh, there's also several different types that, that you, can, you can get. So look for one that, that fits your thumb nice and snugly. Um, and uh, some of them have a, a, little bit, uh, a little bit more loose feel, and they'll give you a little bit more, more of a slap on that. And uh, some are a little bit, uh, little bit looser that are more comfortable for the, th for the thumb, but they might start to catch here. So in order to keep it catch, I, from catching, I'll, I'll use a little uh, tighter thumb pick. Um, some people, you know, heat them up a little bit to, to get them just the right shape. But uh, since I have a small hand, uh, one thing that I do is I cut the end off and shape it. I use a little sandpaper here. Um, this is the same thing I use on my fingernails. Uh, this is the uh, Luthier cloth nail file here, uh, which gives me a bunch of different grades of sandpaper. So I'll sand the edge of that with the, with the rough all the way around so to get a, a s nice smooth edge then the fine, and then even go on to, uh, you know, the extra fine grades of sandpaper here. And that gives you a, a nice smooth edge that's not going to rub against your strings. And that's the very same thing I do with my fingernails to get the nails smooth. And I find that's especially important when I'm playing a steel string guitar. And I have to do it more frequently with a steel string because just that string will wear away a little bit of, of the fingernail as it'll wear away your thumb pick. So every now and then uh, just take that fine sandpaper and uh, sand the edge of that and that'll just make your playing a whole lot easier and it'll sound better too. One thing that you may notice is that uh, normally I say, you know, don't brace your pinky. I learned to brace my pinky and it took a long time to unlearn that so that I could have a nice relaxed feel uh, over the 
uh, sound hole here, but when you're playing with a muffled bass, your hand is in a position where you can actually let that pinky sit there on the face of the guitar, and it doesn't really uh, cramp your hand at all. So uh, it's okay to, to uh, rest your pinky lightly on there, uh, or not. Either way is okay. So let's go back and forth now between the sixth and the fourth string, just to get the sense of the movement of the thumb. Uh, so it, it, it moves like little circles here, a little circular motion like that. So we, we don't want you to be going like this, straight down. We want you to be making nice circular motions. So we'll do six, four, six, four, nice big circles, and lean into that so that you're getting a sense of the rhythm. So get your whole body feeling that rhythm. Okay, now that's the way I, I learned, but it's actually not exactly the way that Travis does it. So instead of just going back and forth between two nice, clean bass notes, he thinks in terms of a honky-tonk piano player who's going bass, chord, bass, chord bass chord with the left hand. So instead of playing that fourth string, I want you to swipe a bunch of strings. So let's make an E chord. And so we're going to go six and then swipe two or three strings. So you're be swiping at the middle strings or th two or three strings there. Six, four, three, and two. Let's try for that. Six. Strong. So that make a big swipe. Still nice circular motion, bass, chord. Getting that feel? And you notice we're just hanging on to that six string. You know, I learned that in, in everything that I did, I went back six, four, five, four. A lot of people play that way. Chad Atkins played that way, nice, nice clean back and forth. But Travis actually just hung on that sixth string most of the time, just hang on that same bass note without that double alternating. And uh, in thinking about, well, what note do I hit first, you know, the sixth string or the fifth string, um, I used to always start on the uh, bass note of the chord, the root of the chord. So if I'm on a C chord, I'll start on that C in the bass. If I'm on a D chord, I'll start on with a D, a D in the bass. Uh, but when I heard Travis is playing, I said, what's that cool sound? And what it was is lots of times he was playing a different note in the bass, a uh, different note of the chord, the third or the fifth. So if he's on a C or a C seventh chord like this, he'll play the sixth string in the bass. So that's G in the bass. So that he's got the five of the chord in the bass. Or I should say the sixth string, which is the five of the chord the, on that G. So it's got that cool sound. And if he's on a D chord or a D seventh, he'll grab over the top here uh, the F sharp. So that's the third of the chord. D, E, F sharp, right? And uh, so uh, I always played it like this, grabbing that, but Travis actually grabbed a lot of notes with his thumb around the, the top of the guitar. And he had a great big hand and skinny neck guitar. And I have a small hand and uh, fat neck guitar, so uh, lots of times it's, it's a little harder for me to do, but if... Uh, if you can reach it, that's a really cool way to play with grabbing your thumb around the top. So let's try that on a D seventh chord. So um, we'll grab that second fret, the F sharp, and still swipe at that chord. Just hang on that note. And he actually did a lot of bass runs with that thumb. It's up to the first fret. And the second. And up to the C seventh. And then I'm going to walk into the 
D7. Okay, or with a thumb around the top. Now, I worked a long time on, on bar chords like this to get a full bar chord, but with that thumb around the top, Travis about never made a full bar chord. He grabbed that with a thumb. Right. Let's do a little exercise with that. Uh, we're going to take this D seventh chord with a thumb over the top, and in fact, you might not even need this first string. We can take that finger off. So we've just got those two notes and this over the top with a thumb. That's our new D seventh chord. So we're going to go bass chord like that, and we're going to move from there up to the G chord. So you see, these two fingers are just going to slide up two strings, and the thumb slides up one. And we'll add one more finger. So that brings us to the G chord like this. So you see how elegant that is, sliding from the D seventh. Slide up to add one finger. There's your G seventh to D shape. So you can even do a bass run with a thumb. Lift, let it go, and put it back. And that brings us there. Okay, we're going to do a D seventh. Uh, three times and then walk up and to the G chord. Okay, here we go. So D seventh, one, two, three, walk up. You may have learned, like I did, that you take one finger per string, ring finger sits on the first string, middle finger on the second, and index finger on the third, and the thumb gets these three bass notes. So that's the way you do an arpeggio. Uh, so that's a very efficient way to play. It's a great way to play. Uh, but when uh, I was really surprised to learn that Travis actually just used two fingers. He played all of his melody notes with the index finger, just moving it back and forth what, to whatever note he needed. Uh, so. Either way is cool to do. The, uh, if you play just with the index finger, that's the real uh, Travis style, the way he did it. Or you could use uh, one, one finger per string. Um, either way is, is completely cool with me. So uh, what did you notice about that? One thing that, uh, in that very typical kind of lick, there's a lot of syncopation going on. So there's playing the melody notes in between the bass notes some of the times, anticipating, you know, comes in before the beat. Um, and that's something that's really important to the style, getting that syncopation. So we're, we're going to work through that slowly. It takes a little while to, to get that kind of happening, uh, but uh, definitely worth the time. So that's uh, the little riff there. You'll hear that in uh, Walk in the Strings or uh, Cannonball Rag, uh, a lot of that kind of kind of chord and, and and syncopation that goes with it. One thing I'd like us both to work on is speed. And I don't mean playing faster, I mean playing slower. So uh, really to lay into that beat. You'll find that some of these exercises may seem really easy and you'll, you'll kind of want to go to play them fast, but the harder part is playing them slowly and really getting that solid feel happening. Uh, so uh, let's actually, let's just take this, this chord and, and do it together and see if we can't get a little more solid feel happening. Uh, so this is one of my favorite chords. Uh, you see it all over in Travis picking. This is a seventh chord. And it comes out of this C seventh position. So you, kn you know this one, and you know a B seventh position. Right. Take that B seventh, move it up one fret, and that becomes a C seventh if you don't play the second string, right? Uh, so uh, when you think about both of those together, you've actually got five notes out of that. Uh, you've got all of those notes. So if, if I had... If I could bring my thumb all the way over, I could play all, all those notes at the same time. So we, we can choose three different shapes out of those five notes. This shape, this shape, and mi mixing those together. 
so that you have to change your fingering for that. So uh, we've got the uh, pinky and then index, ring, middle finger on those notes. Slide up so that becomes C seventh, C sharp, D, D sharp, E seventh. So that's where we get that chord. Uh, so taking that E seventh chord, let's just go back uh, bracing uh, right here, putting the mute on just in the right spot there. So we've got the, cho we're choking the strings there. And uh, we're gonna go back and forth, thumb chord, three, four. So it takes uh, a while to kind of just get that feel nice and solid. And it helps to uh, play along with other people and, and uh, just do that accompaniment for a while. And uh, when I heard Chet Atkins talk about how he learned and he said he went like, he went back and forth between uh, two notes and he said he did that for a couple of years. <laughs> he said so. Um, getting that solid feel and work on it when you're playing with other people and just do that. Don't add any fancy stuff, just to kind of get your feel happening and get a nice solid beat. <laughs> 